Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with Maths and Stats, and in this video, another video in our series of videos dealing with recurrence relations, uh, we're going to concentrate on how to solve, how to find a closed form uh, solution uh, to a recurrence, re recurrence relation using what's known as the method of differences. Uh, and in this particular video, what we're going to do is we're going to consider four particular cases uh, and maybe what I'll do is, so we're going to consider four cases and we're going to gradually build up more complex solutions. Uh, so the four cases that we're going to consider, so we're going to consider, we're going to consider four recurrence cases, okay? Uh, and the four recurrence cases that we're going to consider is the recurrence, let's say the first one, the recurrence that uh, the nth term is simply equal to the previous term, a n minus one. The second recurrence that we're going to consider is that the nth term is equal to the previous term, a n minus one, plus some constant. The third recurrence that we will consider is the nth term is equal to the, the previous term, a n minus one, plus n. So it's not a constant. Uh, it is a variable that's dependent on the term that we're looking for, okay? in, in contrast to the previous one, where B is a co constant that doesn't change. N changes depending on the term that we're looking for. And then finally, the fourth case that we're going to look at is uh, the nth term is equal to uh, a n minus 1 plus some constant times times the the term, the, the term that we're looking that we're looking for. Okay. And the technique we're going to use is what's known as a method of difference. Now the method of difference doesn't always work, okay, uh, but will work in these particular special cases. Uh, what we will do in the next video, the video that follows this particular video, is that we look at another method, which is uh, a method based on iteration to see can we can we figure out uh, a closed form formula for the nth term of a recurrence relation. So let's just have a look at the first the, the first situation. So let's say case, let's have a look at case one and see can we figure out what's going on here. So what we have is we have uh, a of n is equal to a of n minus one. And let's just keep in mind that to get things started in relation to these recurrences that we need to have some base cases. So where we're going to define, let's say, a zero to be equal to a specific value, let's just call it a. So Solving by the method of differences is going to look at the differences between each term within the sequence that's generated by this particular recurrence. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off, okay? Uh, if you look at this particular recurrence in general, what this is saying to us is if a n is equal to a n minus 1, well, then what we have is that a n minus a n minus 1 must be equal to 0. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at the cases as we iterate through from 0 uh, up to n and see can we find any particular pattern uh, in these differences, okay? So what we we'll start off is with, with n is equal to one. So we'll start off, we'll look at uh, a one minus a one minus one, which is a zero. And off this recurrence, that must be equal to zero. The next difference that we will look at, so this is the difference between uh, the term at index one and the term at index zero. So the first term and the second term, it's the difference between the first term and the second term in the sequence. Uh, then we'll have a look at a2 minus a1, which must also be equal to 0. Uh, a3 minus a2 must also be equal to 0. So the difference between the terms is that there's, there's the, the terms in the sequence is that there's no difference between them. And you probably can see what's actually happening. This is actually a constant sequence. And we'll continue through, uh, let's say, to the term uh, a n minus 1 minus the one before it a n minus 2, which must be equal to 0 based off this particular recurrence. And then the nth term, a n minus a n minus one must also be equal to zero. So what we're going to do here is hopefully what we can see is that if we add these particular, if we add these differences together, so let's add the differences, okay? So we're going to add these differences, but what we can hopefully see is that we have a positive a one here and we have a negative a one here. So when we add them together, then two things are going to cancel out. There's no a0 listed other than in the force difference here. There's no other a0 listed down through these particular differences. But what about a2? a2 is going to cancel with the negative a2 here. a3 is going to cancel with the, the next one. Uh, the an minus 2, the negative is going to have a preceding one, which is going to cancel with that. 
the an minus one is going to cancel with the negative an minus one. So effectively, what we have is this telescope, this telescoping cancellation down through this particular series. If we were to add all of these together, this would cancel with this, this would cancel with this, and so on, all the way down, telescoping all the way down through this particular, this particular uh, iteration of those particular differences. So the only terms that we're left with is the nth term, which is what we're trying to solve for, is we're left with, when we add them together, we're left with a n minus a zero must be equal to, and we need to add up the right-hand side, which are all zeros, so it must be equal to zero. So actually, effectively, what we have is this, is therefore we have that a n must be equal to a zero.